All right, we're off to an adventure to open up the chest, the diaphragm, and all things front, okay? But also to kind of feel the satisfaction of shoulders, musculature in the upper body, kind of washing away that hunched pattern, right? Because we live in a, in a body that goes forward and, and leans down a lot. So I want you to have a blanket at the back of your practice space, a bolster, so it's lengthwise on your space. I know some people don't use mats, so that's why I'm mentioning you don't have to have a mat. You want your belt buckled up in a big loop, and then you're going to sit on the very corner, the short end of your bolster, and maybe you have a wall space really close. And if you do, let it let yourself be close to it. You might get be fortunate, and your feet could just push a little bit into it in this pose. So be really fussy to get this one down. I've got a rolled up blanket. If you have a round bolster, you can place that at the base too. So if you do have a round bolster, go get it, place it here. Um, but a blanket works pretty good. Okay. The reason why is you can easily kind of kick any of these props away once you don't need them. So as you lower your legs down on that blanket, calves or even lower towards the, the base of your calves. You're going to sit again on that edge of the bolster. You've got sand nearby, you've got blocks, you've got your belt, and hopefully your ball. And feel when you start to lower down, the press into the wall to me is fabulous because it helps my, my coordination with my, my lower back. So if it's a little iffy for you in your back muscles, just walk your feet now in towards the bolster and then lower back. And then you can add your legs to stretch down a moment. So I can move a little further back, but I want to take it in, in strides here. So I'm going to feel my legs stretch down first, extend so my front thigh band feels like it's kind of a standing body, but it's reclining. I know your insides maybe don't have the same association your brain thinks. Okay, I'm on my back, but as far as your muscles go, that input is, is getting some nice posture. So find your sand and place it across the five legs at the upper leg. And you can also have your sand on the ribs, but take some time here to figure this out. So my bolster is I might scoot a little bit back, but I definitely have my shoulder blades, scapula area. This is all supported by my bolster. So I can really let the front spine of my body just gradually kind of release. So situate all the things that you have on and let's begin. Coming into Satu Bhanga, right, which is a supported bridge. If your feet are touching the wall, that also might be delightful just to feel them supported by the blanket. You can come up and reset again if it looks like you want to change it up. But let the arms center down so that they are either the level of the heart or a little bit lower. They could be right beside your your body with the shoulders back, but I find my chest doesn't open that well with my arms kind of clinging to my sides. Of course, if you have an eye pillow, you can settle that across your eyelids. But start the motions of breathing and just feature kind of the nuances of centering. I think of centering around our heart or our belly. Just feel that front stream of muscles loosen. The forces of gravity support the process. If you need the blanket under your head a little higher, well then go ahead and fold it once more. 
Like, that's fine. So you might decide, well, it's, you know, maybe it doesn't feel good in your head. You know, circulation takes takes different sensations in our body, right? Some of us get, you know, too much pressure in our head if our head's as far back. We're all individual uh, responders on this thing. So do what you need so that you can kind of shift your focus to revealing that openness in the chest, the stretch and the threads of the upper leg into the psoas. And if any of this is too much pressure with your back, you can always bend your knees and just walk your feet a little closer towards your seat. Your feet could shift out a little wider, maybe stance is wide, knees rest together. This might be the perfect variation of having the legs straight is causing too much response in your back to release. Let's take about another five breaths here. Think of this as our opener to breathing and circulation. Setting the body up for basically going upside down the next few moments, right? We want the front kind of panel of the body, especially from the ribs to the hips, to elongate. I can't think of a better way to do that than this shape because we're not about to do some back bends, right? Where we push our hands on the floor behind us, right? Where our back bends are these style, this style, which is a restorative, pretty good chest opener and back arch. And now, as we start to shift, we're gonna come into cobbler's pose, which means the soles of the feet together, the knees apart. So you can guide your knees to point up and then bring the soles of the feet together Oh, I'm sure the sand is going to feel a little awkward there. So you can bring it up a little higher on the rib spaces. You can leave it there if it doesn't seem to challenge your knees, right? Even if it's pulling on the adductors. The leg pits can always use some circulation before we get the legs upside down, okay? The circulation meaning externally kind of rotating and just feeling where there's extension in the spine right, in this moment, where the rib spaces kind of flutter open, because it's butterfly pose too. That's what we call it in yin yoga, this butterfly. Okay, now let's try taking the blanket that's under our head and just fold it a little bit higher. So I don't know if you have yours folded up into a quarter fold. Mine was really pretty low. So I'm gonna just feel if I place it about near the shelf at the back of my head, about that occipital bone space, and then just a little bit above that, of course, because where else would the blanket go? But my, my neck, my curve at my neck is not pressed into a blanket, okay? We're gonna set up for brain float eventually. So I do want you to kind of start to feel these supports of just a mere blanket. And then your bolster is gonna help you set up for success in the spine. So let's take the sandbag and move it away. And I want you to point the knees up. So walk the feet you know, about hips distance apart and be calm because this is a bit of a transition for the bolster because it's not sure right, how you're gonna rotate it. So I find walking the feet in close towards my, towards my center, as close as I can, so my heels are a little bit up. And the reason I want you to have that blanket higher is you have some more padding for the neck, but just think of how the neck's gonna, going to now start to, to flex a little bit. So you're gonna lift up the hips a little bit. Now it's hard to do that, isn't it? So I'm gonna lift up my hips and then push my bolster towards the side and then turn so it's across my, my low to mid back, okay? So you're not sure where the heck is this bolster supposed to be? It's holding my whole pelvis. My hips are right at the base, right? So if I reach down, the, the curve of the rear is right at the base of the bolster. The blanket feels, now it's now a little, it slid down a little bit towards my neck curve. 
as my bolster was holding my neck up when it was lengthwise. So then as you lift up your feet, you'll take a ball and place it between the knees or a block if you don't have a ball. Okay, so remember the pelvis is supported entirely on a bolster and we definitely don't want the bolster too low. It's, it's almost always a complaint I know someone in person doing this, if their bolster is too low, their back is not happy. So it may seem a little weird to have this bolster this high, but it's not, you know, all the way up behind the heart or your upper ribs, but feel where it supports you. And I want you to start to move the ball. So you're kind of gliding, you might lose it too, but you're rolling, you're gliding and squishing the ball. I think of it as almost a full spin of the ball, and I'll show you with my hand. So what you have the ball is between the knees, and you're kind of bicycling the legs, right? Should so feel like the inner legs are kind of gripping up a little bit to do this. So the, the pelvic floor kind of activates and responds. Yes, you could have your knees closer to your chest. You could try that version. Knees a little closer in. Just kind of see, does that work? Can you see how this is? I'll turn a little bit so you can see. So I'm rotating, so I'm kind of moving the ball. Of course, it might be a little lower on the, the lower inner leg. That might work out for you too. Explore it for just a few more moments, this movement. I would explore moving your knees closer to your chest, okay, and moving a little further away. It's only temporary. And if the legs feel really like they're toning up, as they're trying to hold this, this little ball. That's good. I want you to feel a little tone in the thighs. And then plant the ball, center of the knees. Make sure you're supported on your bolster. And then spread the arms open to the shape of a T. So your feet can relax. And then the knees are going to go side to side. Two knees. And you want to have the spacer between the knees. And again, you could use a block. I know some people that prefer the block on this one because there's no, it's not a responsive surface. But I like to feel and notice the difference from one knee to the next or one thigh band to the next. How it stretches across and kind of pushes a little bit into the ball. Yeah. So when you go across, you might get a little adjustment in the back. This is about when it might happen. So as you cross through, do you feel the next time you go over towards, let's say the right, so we have an agreement of the side, and I want you to place a block besides your mat, besides your bolster, sorry, on the short end of the bolster. The block could be at the second setting or the lowest setting, and you'll reach your knee, the right knee on top of that block. It's gonna be also the side of the right leg, um, and you're not trying to like push the fibula down, you're just focusing on the sensation on the left hip. So if you guide the block a little higher over to the right side, you might find that's interesting for the combination of the torso. You might guide it just right across from the short end of the bolster, just straight over. But instead of trying to push the edge here, just let your body stay with this twist for a few more Head can go to the left, the head could be in center. Breathe slow. Even if there's temptation to push into the ball with your knees, the top knee, just kind of feel what that might be like pushing a little bit into the ball and then relax. Okay, now move the knees towards your right arm, lift them up off the block. And then as we come back in center, okay, kind of reset things, right? You might have to grasp the little handles on the side of your bolster and kind of reset the back of the pelvis. And again, I always find this interesting after having that first pose with the neck in that nice extension. 
Now it's a little bit more challenging. So again, don't have the, bolt, the blanket all the way down your shoulders. Have some space. And then place the block on that left side and move your knee, the left knee over towards it, but both knees are going up. And you might get a feeling of, oh, I'm gonna just try to move the block a little higher so that you're kind of peeling open this lower back, back of the pelvis. And even though you're not kind of rolling on the glute, which you felt before, I want you just to feel maybe that right leg pushing a little bit into the ball, or you can put your hand on the side of that right knee. That's kind of nice to do. You might have to move the ball a little bit in, so it's kind of snug. But we use the ball as a spacer, right? Or a block, whichever you have. If you use the block, you really want to use it so it's a, its most um, narrow setting. I think we used to use the block all the time on this kind of thing. So as you settle in for a few more, let your head maybe rotate to the right. Just feeling that right shoulder downwards. Feel the ribs, feel the heart centered. If me right now it feels perfect to have my head right here. If I was to try to pivot and turn it further, it just doesn't feel right in the moment. So I'm connecting like the back of my skull and that upper right side of my shoulder feels a good spot onto the relaxing on the ground. You can always bring your right arm a little higher beside you if you want to feel that circulation in the chest. Nicely done. Okay, so relax the, the move over to that left side. Maybe you're going to lift the left knee off the block and just see if you can bring the knees closer towards that left leg. And then bring the knees back into center. And we're going to take the ball out and let the knees just go side to side so you can find some peace in that lower back. Not, not a piece of your lower back, but peacefulness in your lower back. And we're going to get our belt, as I'm mentioning, that we're going in towards the variations on brain float. So make sure your belt is connected, whether you have a D ring or a cinch belt or a buckle belt. You don't want the, the, the buckled area at your feet, but you'll find, I tend to try to get the, the, the tail of the belt in an area I can tug on it, you know, not the other direction with the, with the extra part. But Kind of feel on your bolster. Do you feel like you're far enough down on it with your rib space? You want the rule of the of the ribs, right? Getting some rib support here. And then just have your feet push out into the width of your loop. Just the right amount, not too much. And definitely too little is okay though on this one. Too much is no okay. So if I push out with my feet, and notice is that your feet that are pushing, and we can go in a conundrum with all these things, but basically you're in a wide stance. And the leg parts, right, the muscular tone might feel like, I feel it felt sense of my leg pit having some circulation. I love this one because you could hold your belt if you're feeling a little bit awkward with the, with how far out you want the feet, maybe you position them closer or further out in any determined moment. But we're reversing the effects of gravity quite obviously towards our heart, lungs, brain. But most importantly, that draining of that lymph so that the, the lymph drain is a real deal here with the leg pits, the lymph pool here. So I like to get a feeling of my knees being really comfortable, they're not twisting, you're also not pivoting in too much. So you can always touch to your knees. You can always use a little bit of care, knee care. And then as your hips kind of feel that elevation, let's bend the knees. We can bend them, we just don't twist them. And then we'll hold on to the belt and we'll slide the feet together, pull the belt towards your heart. Okay. 
and then walk the hands up the belt. And let's first feel that straight upside down verticality with the legs. And then I want you to slip the left foot out. The right leg has that reach. And then the left leg releases down. Lucky that you got your blanket or your bolster the, below. That can be kind of nice. And you might fuss a bit to make it nicer. <laughs> okay. If you want it to be supporting you, just a little bit of support is good. If you have the bolster, though, just be careful it's not hyperextending your knee. So if you feel like it's pushing your heel up too much, then it's not the best for the knee. Because then we're going to likely sand it. So take a sand bag and guide it to the top of the left thigh. Kind of push it down so the thigh lid and more has that set pressure. And then you might relax your left foot and then find the loop under your right foot extending down. And then you're going to kind of figure out, kind of look at it and see how it reaches. And sometimes we think of how the belt reach to the crown of the head, that's a good measurement. But mostly it's just a felt sense of what's the right length. Right, so I scoop up at the, the brainstem here. Right, again, kind of, we're not really the brainstem, actually I'm more, I like the idea of the occiput, that occipital area to put the belt, but then I, I almost always go a little bit above it for traction. And I don't think it has to do with my hamstring. I think it has to do with, it doesn't feel good closer to my neck. <laughs> That's not at all where I want the belt. So I feel pretty trusting here. I've seen some people have it pretty low and just say that's what they want. So it is up to you, but it's definitely not over your ears, right? Unless you want to hear less. Then you put your bell over your ears. Okay. And then open out the arms. And really feel if you need to loosen up this belt, don't overdo the strain here on the leg. So just be careful. If you do loosen it up, but hold the back of your head so there's no shock there. Although it might be a good thing for the brain to have a little bit of this jostling. Um, you know, something different than it's usually just on top of you and you're thinking with it maybe, but have some pressure into it. This nice little hole at the back of our skull. It's really great. Okay. Of course, some don't like this. So if you don't, you can always take the belt with your hands and reach back overhead, head on the blanket, okay? There's good options. Opening out the, the shoulders a little bit, find the perfect match for you. It doesn't have to be far down. It could be kind of robot arms to start and then arms flow open. So as we're in brain float here, Sense the circulation through the back of your head in towards and down towards the spine. And then one offshoot of your spine, right, is your leg, right? And clearly, if my extremity goes upside down, it's delivering that blood back towards the heart. My hips are lifted, that's another benefit. It's more beneficial if I have my hips up on something with my leg upside down. Just gravitationally. Okay. Now, some of you like to stick with these longer than others, I know. So I'll give that option to shift to the next side, but if you want to stay a little longer, do so. If you want to work on endurance in these, right? That's part of this practice is um, specificity in some shapes that feel a little more therapeutic for some. Do those longer, work on your endurance in it. If you like it, there's probably something behind that, but you might want to stay with it. Okay, now when I change sides, I, I find it's pretty nice sometimes. I like to do the crossover work between sides off and on. 
So just leave your sand on there. You're gonna take a hold of your belt. You're gonna slide it off the back of your head once you decide to do that arc, you stay in brain float. We can't change your change your, your decision, you stay with that, that's fine. But then some of us will cross the right leg over to the left. Sand will fall on its own. You have just the right amount of reach through your hip, not too much. Just use that reach with the leg over to the left side. Do you feel like you're reaching with your leg or your hip? They're sort of connected, so there's likely some interface with that. But hopefully, as you come back center, keep it simple, hold the belt with both hands now, and just taking some circular motions with that right leg. You feel where the belt is on the foot, like maybe you move it higher, maybe you move it more central maybe lower to the heel, or the other direction. You feel if your arms are making the leg move or is the leg able to move on its own? You just kind of feel a little slack on the belt and see if that changes. And they kind of relies on the pulling there. I think it likes that resistance too. Okay. Now back to center, left foot up into belt, push the feet out again. Just a few moments with it. So reverse action. And you might kind of move a little bit with your hips. Maybe think about shoulder shrugs, maybe hip shrugs. Never thought of that one, but I like that idea, hip shrugging. You can't really shrug your hips at the same time, but you can shrug your shoulders at the same time. It's kind of look different than that, don't they? One's on the top, one's in the middle of it all. Okay, yikes. Bend the knees, grasp the belt, and fly the feet together. Okay, now as you lower the right leg, you better find where your sandbag probably didn't go too far, and you'll muscle it over to the right thigh. Grab a hold of that sand and place it on the top of the right thigh, whether you're using a sandbag or, you know, whatever kind of weight you have. Some people use, you know, the weights that used to put on your, your ankles and walk around with, those work fine. Okay, all right. So, take the belt, it's placed, it's placed with this on the foot. So you might hold the belt and kind of work your foot, kind of let it jiggle a little side to side, kind of feel the footing. And then as you place your belt to the back of your, your brain here, you might even feel with your, your index fingers just kind of where the position of just above the, the ear. And if you were to draw a line back from there, it's probably a good location to put the belt. Or So a little bit above, unless you're going to put the belt around your ears. Admittedly, I haven't tried that. It just doesn't seem right. So as we have that lift, you might find one side just goes right into it. So it's meant to be. They're okay, meant to brain float. But I should get a shirt for Julie in the class that says I'm meant to brain float. <laughs> okay, arms are outwards or they're down. They're just not overhead. Why? Because this is an inversion sequence and I want my blood pressure, breathing lowers, heart rate lowers. I don't want to get too excited in my vascular system here. I want to work on recovery and healing, even if you think, okay, everything in my heart is going great. As far as the vascular world, uh, we can always work on it. One never knows. Two never knows and three never knows, right? No one ever knows. So feel where the thigh is stretching via the weight on it. Kind of interesting. You're not trying to push into your right foot. You're just letting the leg be satisfied stretch-wise by weight on it. It is a stretch in the psoas and the hip flexor. And as far as the quad, 
I don't know if you feel like a real sensation like you do, for instance, if you have a foot behind you and you're doing a typical quad, quad, quad stretch. But it sure feels better on the knee than that one. This is not pulling my knee too far. Breathing. Notice what's good. Being just simply with yourself and this practice. Feeling if your head leans back further. Some of us get into a shape where we let the belt really anchor the, the brain lifting and we don't really get out of the way, we just keep holding. So try to let your the weight of your head kind of lean back. You can hold your, your head when you do that. Of course, your hamstring is going to get the, the most responses and it? it's going to get the most pull. So once that calf and hamstring feel that definition, okay, you're going to just hold on to the belt and slide it off the back of your head. Let your head relax back on the blanket. And then reach up with the right hand on the belt and cross that left leg over to the right. Just feel go slow. You know, I have some ambition just to get it to the, the first reach, and then you might be efforting further, but likely there's some differences on the sides. Maybe it's, you can't feel the quality of difference in the hip range of motion, but you can feel different segments of the leg kind of light up with the circulation, maybe. If you were to kind of just use your fingers, like you're scratching the side of the upper thigh, you can feel where there's little pockets of, you know, if you push deep into them where there's pressure and response, tightness, okay, kind of wiggle your way through those areas. But then just feel the simplicity of maybe bending the left knee and straightening the leg to the right, bending and straightening. Now, some of us will pull the leg a little higher to that right side, some a little lower. Some may have a wall that's kind of holding you back from exploring too much further over, but you can reach and reach and feel. No lack of feeling here. Okay. Feel the right back of the pelvis on the bolster, noticing that's interesting because for most of us on this one, we have the bottom leg straight-ish, okay? We teach this when we do the crossover, the bottom leg bending, okay? So I want you just to notice that, that crossover balance. Now, bend through that left leg and bring the leg back up through center. Hold on and then just let the hands hold the belt and circle that left leg. You get to decide, you might even just go with random rotation, whichever moves first around. You feel that movement from the back of the leg looping in towards the hip. Pull and motion. Feeling as you change directions, I imagine. Okay. All right. So now that we've got some lower, lower bone awareness here, let's go ahead and bring the left knee to bending. And let's take the belt off and take a figure four pose with the left foot on the floor, the right ankle to the left knee, just for a few moments. Just kind of feel the landing pad of the kind of the landing pad of the pelvis with that knee structure out. If you've got a bolster under at the base, you might push your put your foot on that bolster. The blanket's kind of hard to, to pull in. And be careful because you don't want to pull your hamstring doing that. It can be sensitive. They seem pretty durable, and all of a sudden, 
Okay, then uncross, right foot down, left knee points up. Keep it simple how far you advance. Just bring the left ankle to the right knee and the left knee open. Simplicity rules here. It's another good shirt, right? Simplicity rules. I go with that one too. Okay. So you can kind of feel how the, the base of the, the pelvis is on the bolster. This is where you know, do I have a bolster in the right spot, right? My left knee does swing out to the side, but it's not on the floor. The bolster is holding me. Well, I don't think it would make it to the floor. But feel the bones here as we bring the left knee back center. I want you to bring the knees to center, roll to the left, and bring your arms over to that left side, and then push with your right hand to glide down so you're on the other side of the bolster. Okay, so let's push the bolster so that it's a horizontal and you don't have to do much with that. But let's take our blanket at the base. Well, it's nicely round, rolled up, I guess, but I want you to have, and if you've got a round bolster, you can put that in the center here instead of the flat. Yeah, I'm just kind of always using my standard size bolster. It works good. But if you have a round, we'll put that in the center. Um, belt goes to the side. Ball is going to be part of it. And I want you to have your blocks and set them on the other side of your blanket. So you've got one low setting. Uh, I mean, if you're ambitious and you don't think you need more than one, okay. But I would say start with a couple, even if they're both at the low setting. I like to have the top one at the highest setting and I scoot it to the right side of my the back of my mat here so that my shoulder will have ease kind of reaching. But we're not trying to, to yank you know, on our shoulder um, on these ligaments. We're trying to get some nice reach, so keep it simple. Space between bolster and blanket, you know the drill, but. The ball, I think, is essential under my inner right knee or above the knee. Some people put their ball higher up on the inner thigh, okay? And your left foot could move the ball around like it. It's not in a good spot. See if you can start using your feet to move things around. And then lean into your bolster, round or flat, whichever size you got, and then you can add your sand to the exterior. I don't think you're going to put the sand on the interior hip on this one. And as the, the ball supports you, stretch the right arm over. So we can use the blocks and place them so they're at the good spot when they may fall over. Huh? If it's too high up, you can always lower your blocks. Maybe some days you, you feel like you need more help and then you don't. But the block is a nice support for the, the side reaching. Let your brain relax down onto the blankets. Or if you can use your left foot to move that ball a little back or see if you can stretch the, the right front thigh. Most of the essential feeling of releasing is not by forcing the stretch, but really using the props to support the body. That's so important. This is about the time when my, my arm starts to get a little fatigued with full reach. It's been like a minute in, right? Not that much time. So I might move the blocks a little further to the right to make it easier on my shoulder now. Or I might just bring my right hand down to my bolster or my blanket. Like that look like you're going to put your hand under your head and take a snooze, that kind of look. Or you can let your right arm be on the side. Let's see if you can turn your focus inwards for a few moments longer. The right shoulder can also shrug back. This is a great one. Let the weight of your brain. Very important to get the neck to release. You can also roll the back of your head.
side or the back of your head. Now, move the sand aside. We're going to come to a shape of movement, particular with the mid body, mostly all mid body and arms. So, as you flow out, you're going to rotate. Now, think about, don't think about it too much, feel about it. You try to move your midsection onto that bolster. If you've got a round bolster, it's kind of interesting how it pulls apart and teases the tissues. A flat bolster will still give you some response. When I rotate my ribs to the left side and then I come around, I want you to come to, to basically hands and knees crawl position. And so as I turn, hands are gonna lower down onto the, the floor space. Um, put your hands on some space that's firm. Like right? if it's feeling like you need something more under your wrist, you can always use a block. Maybe feel like, well, what's the point of that? But I actually really like boxing with my hands for this one. Those are on my wrist. Some people would probably say not, but some people would love it. So again, you can have the hands on kind of the basic pressure of the ground, but if you have a carpet, um, probably the blocks are gonna be better on your wrists. Even if your carpet's not that squishy, okay? It's not a great thing for our wrists. So you wanna have a little bit more of a Pressure with the heel of the hand. You know, kind of feel heel and all, all the way around towards the roots of the fingers. That's a tricky one to feel. And then round the back into cat pose. And arch the spine. I just feel that mid body. And you don't have to use blocks in your hands, but you might try it. You can always bring the hands into fists. This is a little bit more muscular that way when I have the hands into a fist. So let us feel that's much better on our wrist. It looks kind of functional, doesn't it? But it's it's a little it's a little bit more muscular motion, right? For the arm. Okay, now let's take a moment of just maybe feeling our way into reaching our hips back behind us. Where else are we gonna go here? Stretching out. You can scoot your knees back. You can have your knees on a blanket and then place your forehead on your bolster. Okay. This, you can tell the blocks make a huge difference. Okay. If I don't have blocks and my hands are on the floor, I can just reach for my blankets or another bolster. Let's say you have a round bolster here. You can get your other bolster over here and then place your hands there. But for me, the blocks are just perfect. Okay, and this might be a first time for you to try blocks with this stuff, but hey, you know, it's nice to try things out. Okay, so feeling just that reach. Remember, we're trying to get circulation, draining things out, getting good flow between muscles. We're going to come on up, and we're going to go down to that right hip side cinch, right? So turning. To that right side. Oh, my blocks on the other side. It's always fun to. When I uh, I do re regularly see people brand new to the practice, and they are, they seem to think these props are just so make them so confused. But I think it's a good thing to try to figure out your props all the time. <laughs> oh, okay. Not only are you trying to figure out your props, but also your body. Okay, I've got a ball. It's on the inside of the left knee. And when I lean down to that right side, on the right side, bolster under whether it's round or flat. Remember, some of you might use a round bolster on this I know. And then add that sand to the side of the left hip. And then reach the left arm over. Now, if you roll on the back of your head, it's fine, right? You might be so um, used to being on the side of your head for so many years doing this that you feel like this is you know, the 
it's just not going with the rules here. But the rule is that we're trying to get the neck to release. So rolling is okay. On this one, it's not like you're rolling your head around, right? So you're not violating any of the neck rules that we might have for safe neck, for neck safety. So, you know, I find one, the one area on this, if I kind of feel where my tension is, it's usually my neck. It's kind of funny to say that, but it's like, it is sometimes, oh, my neck is holding, it's gripping. So try to let it go. Even if it's easy for you to have your arm in this reach, maybe it is easy. You can always take a block away. Put on down. Maybe it's better for you to have less height under your hand. That is my block. And I imagine you want some height. I don't think you want to go with that in under your left hand. Unless it's not on the block and it's on the side. Bolster, blanket, or your side. Really feel the rib cage move with the breath. Expand and contract. More moments. Good work. So now we're going to do a little bit of balance work here with our, our structure, and then we'll get to some, some deeper hip and pigeon and so forth. So I want you to move your block over to the side yard, and then Force your sand. So we're going to reset back into hands and knees work that we did moments ago. Again, we're coming into it. So bring the left knee towards the right. And then as you turn, let's take our bolster. Now I'm going to use padding into my knee because I don't know, I can go without it, but I'm going to see what it feels like to have a little bit more support. So I'm going to place my folded blanket below the knees. And my feet, the key would be to have your feet at the wall. So you don't want your blanket too far forward because you'll strain your knees. So have the blanket far enough back, okay? Have your bolster far forward. So let's try this one. Let's have our bolster and kind of toss it over onto your blanket. Getting out there today in this sequence, huh? All out there. Have your blocks both nearby. This is key. Got blocks. All right. Okay, so even if your blanket's a little, little cattywampus here, as long as it's under your knees, you're going to take that reach, I'm going to make it, I'm going to reach to the other side to the bolster, and I'm going to stay with a little determination of my arms stretching. Now, you could put a block under your forehead, so the block could go to the second setting, and right kind of near the hairline. That's a good spot for touch and feel that reach with the arms. Okay. Now take the right arm back towards the blanket or beside your knees if you're not using a blanket. And the right hand, so instead of my hand being forward, I'm gonna try to take it back and the palm's gonna turn so the heel of my hand touches closer to me than my fingers. See how the block is really important. There's something under your head. And then stretch the right arm back forward and switch sides. So left arm stretches back, palm is down. It's not turned open, it's palm down. Stretching the back. I'm a big fan of this one. Although I have to say my head on the block is not the excellent feeling I wish it could be, but it's okay. If you've got a round bolster, it will work. <laughs> okay. All right, now, hands on ground. Okay, move your block over to the side, and then walk your hands as far forward as you like to come into a reaching upward dog. So feet touch the wall, lift up with the chest, breathe. Come back, and just gently guide your hips towards the wall. 
not touching the wall, just towards it. And then round your back so you feel quite a bit of scooping, flexing, and then lower the hips down and arch the spine. Chest lifts up, breathe, and then come back. Hips reach back. Hands push the floor away. Okay. Now, what I want us to do is set our blocks so that they're each on the side of our, well, actually, kind of, it could be the inner border of your mat, but I'm going to put this one up here because you don't, you'll be able to see what we're doing if I have my block over there. But they're kind of on the side. They're the second or third setting, they're just on the edge of the mat. You're going to lift up the knees and try to reach your heels just slightly up the wall into downward facing dog. So the hands, Really get a feeling what part of your palm touches the, the mat. You're going to say all of my palms are on my mat, but you want to really get a feeling. I know the, that webbing of the thumb and the index uh, is going to kind of curl a little bit. The thumb's going to probably bend a bit. It's, it's tricky as you, as you mature in that spot. So take the time. You can turn your hands out. I always feel like you can do that with the downward dog. You can always turn your hands out. The block is in Okay, stretch the chest. Okay, now as you move your head a little forward, you're going to step the right foot between the hands and place your blocks under them, under the hands, not the foot. I have not really tried that thing of block under my foot in a lunge, but I bet it would be interesting. Okay, something to try, maybe not now. So feel the heel a little bit up at the wall. Kind of gives you some ambition to push forward. We're doing this to prep the hip for pigeon. So I want you to use that wall to kind of give you the heel is up. It's giving a little less pull in some parts of the leg. And step the left foot forward. Okay. If you're feeling okay blood pressure wise, let's come up for a moment. Let's keep the feet apart. Don't step on your feet. And bring your arms out and push into your feet to come up. Go slow, don't go fast, but feel the heels press down, feel the arms stretch up. Breathe. Breathe, let the ribs move with the breath. If you're in a warm space, just slow it down here. And then stretch the arms back open and dive forward and take that right foot to step back. Okay, watch out for the wall. <laughs> Don't kick it too hard. Don't put a hole into your wall. All right, so the heel's a little bit up. And the left knee is, of course, bending. It's not like the most perfect bend. I don't want you to try to force the lunge any further than necessary here. Just push back into that right heel. Feel the left knee bending. Breathe. Okay, now lower the back knee. Step the left foot back, and let's take our bolster lengthwise, straight underneath our core, and be a little careful on this one. You don't want your bolster too far back, neither do you want it too far forward. So when you lower down, my hips are pressing into the bolster a little bit, okay? So when I push back into the wall, I like to come into this when I have my arch. Like I'm not gonna come into it and lower down to some, you know, um, some lizard push-ups or something, right? I'm gonna press into my palms, I'm gonna lift up my chest, breathe. Okay. And then just lower down. Now you can lower down and then come into a sphinx pose. So the elbows are down forward. And then lowering down, already down, probably. I don't think you have to take some time to do any, any lizard push ups here. The palms are open. And just feel the feet touch the wall. Okay. Now see if you can push a little further into the wall so the knees come up. If you need to slide out away from the wall a tiny bit, like you need to pull the bolster a little bit away, you push a little further away, that's okay with your ribs. But press into your feet, and then I want you to lift up your head so you're doing, you feel like you're doing tummy time here. A sea, a sea of infants doing tummy time here. So lifting a little bit up, slide the hands back, and then come into locust pose. So the arms are besides 
They're not touching you, right? They're beside you, kind of right working besides the hips and maybe lower. And then let your shoulders turn to pull back. Breathe. And now bring your hands down, palms press, gently arch. Feel just that very strong tundra in the middle. And our, mid, our midline from the sequence can feel pretty sturdy. And we'll come back to table. And let's turn the bolster horizontal across the mat. This is where you want your flat, your standard size flat bolster. So round bolsters are not going to work good on this one. Okay. So now I want you to just take a seat on the bolster face into your wall and the blanket behind you. You're going to pull that in next to the bolster. Okay. Let's check this out. So I got my bolster across horizontal on the mat, one blanket behind in a in a quarter fold. I've been doing pigeon, I know, for a long time, two blankets under the knee, but lately I decided one is better. So you can have two like this, you can have one. You can just try it out. You just you decide. Okay. Just figure it out. But first things first, let's bend the left knee so the left foot is towards the bolster. The right leg stretches out straight out to about one or two o'clock. And you got a ball under your left knee or a block. So let's say the ball is too low and you need a little bit more height. Some people will use a block and a ball. It doesn't look like I would need that, but you can always try it. But what's kind of interesting is sometimes we, um, some people find that the knee touches so they force it and then it pulls around the SI joint. It's all kinds of issues can happen from that. But it also could be the same if I have my knee too high that I can move it down, right? I, so you want to find, just let your knee go out, let it forward. Just trust that. Take a sandbag on the left inner leg. Caution on the knee though still. If you need to move your left foot a little further forward, if that just feels better on the knee. And the knee knows. All right, and now from here, we're going to take our block next to the right leg right? So it's about third setting. I like it the highest it can go for this one. And I just push down the sides of my right leg. I lean down and I just try to reach my hand and stretch the left arm over the side of the face. Okay. Now you could lower your right elbow onto that block on this right side if you bring the block a little closer to you. Okay. That's up to you. But you do want to feel like you started center. You're reaching out of your center to the right arm and down the sides of the leg. And then the left arm kind of lifts. Or it stretches behind your back. That's good too. I think I like that one a little. I like them both. I like the stride of the reach of the side band and the lowering of the hand down. You can let your head rest into your right hand. So you've got the block under your Obviously, your elbow, your head towards your hand. Make sure you get support. If you don't like using the block, you can use a belt under your foot. Some people find that threading feels better. Really work the side, stretching the side there. I can quite like the seated side stretches. Caution here when we come up, you don't want to just suddenly shock the safe from here. So you might have your left hand to your hip, and then when you come up, just lower the right arm. Maybe touch the block so you have something to support you when you lift up. And then turn the spine, the head back center. And then let's take the sand and the ball away from that left thigh. And we'll take the right leg back. Because you have the inner leg stretching. Some of you might not feel the inner leg on that one. But when we take the right leg back, we're going to go to the top of the thigh to stretch. And then as you lean into that left hip, pigeon pose, hands forward. Maybe your forehead is on a bolster, a blanket, 
elbows can be on blocks. I kind of like this one. I just kind of pivot my blocks for my elbows. And you can bring the blocks as high as you want. Yep. But feel that you can venture down towards the floor. So it's not as if I'm trying to get higher. I'm actually trying to venture further down with my elbows. That's pretty key here. So feeling the contour of your hip. Pretty deeper into our, our pelvis, the hip area, the low back. Notice the sensation, how can you not right into the left leg, maybe more than hip, maybe inner leg. And that balance that pressure from that left buttock to the bolster. Right, and then when you come up, you already have some movement here on the left side, right? You've had some poses for that. So when you lean in your left butt off, you're going to swing the right leg forward from behind you and just stretch the left leg out. Don't get the legs tied up together here. <laughs> just kick the left leg out to about 10, 11 o'clock. Place a ball under your right knee. Then a sandbag on the top of the thigh. So now the sand is on the right thigh, but it's turning the thigh out. So I don't want the sand to be pulling my knee in. I have my sand, so I basically put it up as high, and I'm kind of on the edge of my bolster too. I'm almost humpty dumpting it, right? I'm, I'm almost the humpty dumpty dropping off the back, but not today. I'm gonna let my rear kind of just feel like a lot of width in my seat and pelvis. And then as I have that. Sand high up. I'm going to add my block. If you're feeling a little uncomfortable in your left knee, if it's hyperextending, you can put your blanket under it. I don't want you to feel like that's kind of fragile. So if it's fragile there, you can also put a block under your calf and it can kind of put a nice little, little path for the leg so it's not hyperextending. So this, I'll actually show this. My knee feels fine, but it's kind of interesting. You can put the block besides the left leg. Remember your left foot foot is out to about 10, 11 o'clock, somewhere in between. And then as you lean down to that left side, you could push your block towards the, the left foot. You can keep it beside the knee, the elbow down, and then that right arm stretches over. And I look down at the block, like, can you go higher? I guess that's the, the limit of my block height. Stretch the right arm all over the right side of the face. Feel a little turn to the rib cage. Breathe. It only helps. That's Floyd's t shirt, I think. That's the one she gets. So we'll find one for everybody here. So as you feel that arm reach, if your neck is starting to pull, just bring the right arm behind your back. Even maybe just rest the knuckles to the back of the pelvis or a little bit higher and kind of nudge that area for sensation. Notice is the whole area that we work with in pigeon, right? This, this right side of the pelvis into the hip is where we're going to lead ourselves. So just take some care to feel that circulation. And then when you start to come out of this, your arm goes down and you come on up. Okay. Yeah, has anyone tried to walk under the knee or something under the knee? Just you know, noticing that it just might feel like when you come out of it, it's not so surprising. You might be fine without it, but just good to know when you're when you're teaching your friends. Okay, so left leg stretches back, hands down, hip center, knees out and down. With the left foot relax. Okay. okay. This is going to be an interesting final series here that we wanted to. So, blocks maybe under your elbows. If you use blocks on the last side, you definitely want to repeat the same support under your arms. 
on your second side. So just feel where the waist has a little tendency to, to drop down, like the abdominals kind of sink with gravity in this position. So you're trying to give the skin a little bit of pull. Obviously the glute skin is getting a pull because of the bolster under it and your right foot connected towards it. But you might find some nice kind of satisfaction here with tilting at the hips. Again, if it's too much, you can always put the ball under your right rear or a blanket or a little pillow. If you reach back and notice your right rear um, is so far off of the, the bolster, you might go ahead and just place something in, in that path, in that spot to support you. It's me here, I'm almost too excited about where we're going from this one, so I'm already there in my brain, but I'm gonna try to stay here for a few more moments. Okay. All right, now reach the right hip bone over, okay? And you're gonna come on up and you'll swing the left leg forwards and take your blocks off to the side yard. No more blocks, block free. And then slide down off your bolster to your blankie and push your bolster forward and then slide your seat off the blanket. And actually, what you're going to do is lower onto your blanket, lower your head back, and kick your bolster to the right side of your mat or practice space. Okay. All right. Right leg bends. This is the difference. So last pose we did, as far as the, the pigeon pose, it was the right. So I want you to bend the right knee and swing the left leg over on top of the bolster. So a ball can go to your sacrum. It's going to be really helpful. I think it's a great anchor. And then you can add your sand to the upper outer left thigh and feel that circulation into your left hip. Okay, so the left arm is open. The left shoulder kind of counter spins and releases the chest muscles. And when you get a feel of that left hip, sure, you could put the sand further down the thigh towards the knee, but likely you're going to have to feel that sensation for yourself. If it's kind of a dull pressure and you're not too comfortable with it that high on the hip, just slide it a little further down. Okay. And as far as your knee on the, the bolster, right, that's going to affect the ace. We've got, got a cat in the class now, a wandering cat. So feel the left arm open and let your head just roll to the left. Bending the bottom knee. Come on. Okay, so when you come back center, I want you to take that figure four pose we did while, a while back. So move the ball. So I want you to place the ball though at your sacrum. So you're going to shift the ball to the base of the spine and hook the left ankle up to the right knee. Okay, figure four. Part one, figure four, part two, bring the knees to your chest. Okay, hold the back of the right thigh. And this might be the most challenging part is to let the cat out here. Okay. I don't think he's a fan of the fan. Okay, so the ball is supports the lower abdominal muscles a little 
bit here. So if you found that, well, it's a little tricky for dogs, just place the foot on the floor. But feel that left knee out to that left side. Feel how you can kind of shift the, the leverage here into your hip. Right? Okay. Balance of pelvis, I think. Now, as you push down into your right foot, uncross the left foot, take the ball over the left buttock and massage into the glutes. Okay. So we just worked on crossing that left hip over. And so we've done a good amount with it anyhow, as far as the pigeon pose. And so the sensitivity might not be quite the same as if you haven't done any practice in the beginning of class. Imagine it's probably a little loosened up. But remember to move your hips side to side, not focusing so much on the knee movement. They're going to move anyway, but try to push your knees side to side quick. It's not as important as just your hips. So kind of feel that pressure into the ball and glide the spin across it. It's kind of funny because we think that hip movements, and we forget about just that pressure on the, the dermal layer with this soccer ball. Okay. Now, you might keep the ball there on the left buttock and take your bolster over to the left side. And if some of you put your bolster under your feet on this one, so that's fine. And then on this side, we'll take the right leg over to the bolster, place the ball in the sacrum, and then add your sand to the outer right thigh. Okay. Close to the knee. And again, if you've got some, some stuff in the knee that does not want to have the, the sand near it, then that's fine. You can keep it closer to your hip or not use sand. And as the right arm stretches open, you'll let your head roll to the right. So feel the weight of your head. Just slowly roll to the right side. Feeling how the chest gently stretches. Final spinal here, so you can feel where that hip has got some little bit of circulation here across the right band of the upper thigh. So as you move the sand off, maybe you move the sand only on this one, and then slide the left foot in, cross the right ankle to the left knee, and place the ball in the safe room. And then coming into figure four, right? you could have the bolster further down, but as that knee is out to the side, I want you to keep the knee out or bring the knees in towards the chest and hold the back of that left thigh. Okay, so feeling the lower back stretching as well. This is not an easy feat, is it, to have the ball the safe room. If you're not using a ball, that's fine. You can use a block in its lowest setting. And then let go of the back of the left thigh, lower the foot. And then I want you to move the ball to the right buttock and then uncross the legs or keep the leg crossed over to the left knee. You could still have that connection and move into that right glute. Okay? To kind of get some circulation optimally around that upper root of the hip into the leg bones. So you can feel that circulation into the hip. Slide the hips side to side. Breathe. This might feel really good, especially at the finale of the class, right? Before we go up, sit down at the very end here, we're there. And so once you feel that pressure, make sure you get all the body weight on the ball. But just let it go. Don't try to roll back or hover over the ball. You want to do some tactile, some pressure. And then when you come down off of the ball, I want you to bring the knees in towards the chest and take a moment with hugging the knees and rocking. And then most importantly, kind of find that rotation around the outer rim of the sacrum. So just a little bit of circling 
both directions and then roll to a side and come on up and take your bolster right up against the wall. So it's smack dab touching the base of the wall here and you'll pull your blanket and you probably only need one. I don't think anyone's gonna wanna put a bunch of blankets on themselves. Um, but you'll have your sand and I pillow if you have it and lift up your hips on the bolster and move to one side of the bolster and then swing the legs up side down. Okay, so the pelvis is lifted. Okay. It has spoken, right? So the pelvis is lifted and the blanket is under your head. And this might be one where you have it close to your shoulders because it just feels cozy. This is often taught where you would roll the blanket, make a little bit of a tube right at the, the base of the skull at the neck so that the jaw can relax. I'm not a fan of that, but I, I do keep trying it. And this hasn't been really something that that roots in my system well. So you could try and go, oh, I love that. I we haven't done that every time. So you choose. Some people would take like a hand towel and then they'll place it right there and that works really good too. So you choose. Very little blanket under your neck or sun. And then let your eyes relax. You can have your natural eyelids resting down over the eyes, back to the brain. Where I pillow give some nice weight because the eyes are kind of unweighted so much of the day. Plus, you're sleeping, right? But a large amount of our living time, the eyes are, um, there's no weight into them. So now you're kind of putting that support internally with your vision. And just feel that movement across the rib cage. Let the belly move with the breath. Actually feel the support of the bolster helping assist that movement of the diaphragm. So if I have my hips lifted, it's going to challenge my breathing muscles, but also it will be the counter challenge when you exhale, which is what we're focusing on to downregulate is that seconds longer exhale. And the belly returning back towards the spine. Maybe let your head nod from just side to side. Small notches of movement at the base of the neck. And then the arms could be out from the heart, they could be a little lower. And the head back center. And then start to shift your feet away from the wall. If you happen to have that weight on them, see if the knees can be, I know they're apart, okay, but you don't want them to be squeezing together here. Just feel what they're like when they separate. Just that physical felt, even without looking at them. And you see them, and there's a little space. And as you bend your knees, you might toss your sand overhead, but you might like to just lift it and drop it. And then hug the back of the thighs or bring the feet to the wall. Any direction that gives you that feeling of, oh, now there's circulation up my back into my shoulders and my neck. Where we started with that area all lifted 
And we're ending with that grounded and hopefully some good support for your posture. Now, if you could roll to the side, you might go side to side a little bit, kind of windshield wiper with the hips, not with the feet so much, but the hip bones, and then roll to a side. Roll, roll, roll. And then come on up. Take a seat. Find the bolster underneath and the back of the pelvis kind of touching towards the wall, even if it's just a little sliver of that that touches the wall. It is kind of a sliver. And then you've got the arch of the spine and the shoulders and the body. So bring the hands up towards the heart section and relax your chin towards your hands. Just take a moment, whether it feels like honoring your awareness for your practice today, acknowledging your effort to be here for this session for yourself and for this community of practitioners. Taking a deep breath in to wellness. And exhale. Bow into that space. 